Hey everyone, we're going to take a week and just sort of do a shallow, quick dive into internal communication, internal business communication, with some some tips and some ideas from some very good sources on how to communicate internally in a business organization and how not to do it. This will be part of a discussion board assignment in which you're going to talk about your own experiences with internal business or organizational communication. Even if you're 16 years old and you're not working, you have had experience, whether it's inside uh, the, the school or in other ways, you've received and, and, and participated in internal communication that is part of an organization of some kind. And so you're going to kind of share your experience with that. And based on this information, you're going to provide some thoughts about what goes right and what goes wrong. So let's do a quick overview looking at internal business communication basically throughout the organization and then briefly how to write and how not to write business-based emails. We're going to start with a failure and this happens shockingly often in large and small businesses all the time. So this is a case study involving PayPal, the, the app where you can pay for things online. You know what it is. At some point, the CEO became aware that a lot of his own employees were not using PayPal. And so there are a number of things that you can do when you learn something like that. One of which is, hmm, what do we need to do differently to encourage our employees to use it? Um, the CEO took a different approach and basically said, if you're not using PayPal, then you might as well quit. Now, the thing to remember about the internet is everything is forever. So you may think you've deleted an email. You may think you've deleted an internal communication. You may think you've deleted an image. In some way, it is there forever and clever people can find it. So just, it's important for all of us to remember that this is not a conversation over coffee. This is something that creates a place on the internet that never goes away. So the obvious mistake here is what this CEO needed to do is to start internally with a conversation. Hey, talk to me about our product. What can we learn from our product and what can we learn from you all about why they're not using the product that is paying their salary? You just don't say, you know, either do this or quit. And you'd pretty much never do that. Um, post COVID, a lot of companies have begun saying, if you don't come back to the office, you will be fired. Now, there may be a reason for them to want everybody back in the office, but there are ways to go about doing this with incentives, with conversations, with, with good communication to do it right. This is a case in how to do it wrong. Here's an example of how to do it right. So there was a, an organization called Nationwide Building Society, and the CEO and the administration, the, the, the bosses of the operation, were worried that the organization wasn't going in the right direction. When I was a CEO, I used to joke with my employees, this you may have heard this before, the beatings will continue until morale improves. It's funny because we see one version of that or another all the time. You know, I'm going to continue to be mean and nasty to you until you act better, until you like your job more. Well, obviously, that is never going to work. In this case, what the CEO did was started with an internal survey. Tell me about what you know about what's going on. Tell me your views of what's working and what isn't. This was done 
in a way that that the the answers were provided from employees without naming who they were so everything was they felt safe um, but they took that information and then began a conversation with the workforce that resulted in a whole different approach to how they went about doing business how they went about marketing themselves it started though with listening and that is always a key one of the main keys in any communication we're going to talk just a bit here about emails that you write and receive inside an organization so we're not talking about personal emails to friends or whatever this is a different process that requires a different approach so I'm taking this information from the Service Corps of Retired Executives it's a nonprofit organization that exists to help businesses do better and it's, it was built by and is basically supported by people who have retired as executives of companies and so here's their list of ideas on how to make sure you write an effective email so a some of this sounds obvious but I think you know it's often the case that we don't follow one or more of this of these simple steps make sure that you have a specific reader or a specific group of readers in mind and that you you prepare your content with them in mind make sure that you have an effective subject line it's sort of like the opposite of clickbait but it's the headline for your email and if you want people to read it have an appropriate but engaging subject line that will encourage people to actually read what comes next don't meander from one thing to another you know don't don't tell stories there's a place and a time to tell stories and have a good time and chit chat an email with a specific purpose is not that time now there are times when it's okay to be somewhat casual in your in your emails and conversations but there are also times when you need to make sure you stick to a formal language and those times are often when you are sending an email to more than one person uh, these people may include folks that you don't know well or if it's something that you have reason to believe will eventually get forwarded or shared understand that something meant for a specific person once it's on the internet once it's sent as an email has a life of its own um, organize your content in a logical way we in English 101 and 102 we teach the five paragraph essay if you've been in either of those classes you may have experienced that but basically it's an idea of starting with a an introduction a thesis statement now you don't have to be this formal in an email but you want to have some structure and organization to the content that you're including in your email make sure that you're using proper language conventions when you're writing on social media you you might be using acronyms and a lot of LOLs and whatever else and you may not be capitalizing appropriately you may not be using periods and commas when you're writing an email inside a business or an organization of some kind you need to make sure that you're using proper language conventions that you're using proper grammar spelling punctuation use a tool like Grammarly to help you if necessary finally and this is one I have learned uh, over and over the hard way is sometimes it's best to let an email just sit there in draft form particularly if you are in an emotional state where you're upset or you're whatever you are it might be best to let that sit overnight before you send it go back and look at it and see if you feel the same way I have gotten myself in trouble more than once by firing off a somewhat fiery email and then wishing that I could take it back because that's it sent out a message in a way that that wasn't conducive to good communication and 
it's there forever now. And so even if I want to try to mend fences, uh, people can go back and look at that and get irritated all over again. And so sometimes it's best just to let that sit and then give it another look with a fresh, even if it's, you know, having a good night's sleep. I want to go back and have you recall the five core competencies that our textbook talks about. All of these things are good fits with what we've just talked about. So there is a place to just remind yourself, maybe write these down on a whiteboard or on a post-it note or whatever to remind you of the five basic competencies in all business writing and communication. Now, the final thing I will mention here is there are times in times of, of emergency or urgency when a top-down, very difficult communication has to be done. I've been in those places myself where there comes a time when you know you don't have time to do all of the internal massaging and getting feedback and then preparing sometimes there is an urgent issue that you need to address right away and it needs to come from the boss when that happens whether you are the sender or receiver try to keep it in that context keep it specific to that purpose and understand that there's a reason that it's done in that way. Those are very rare moments. They don't happen that often. And if someone is doing that pretty much all the time, that is a recipe for disaster and failure that will get CEOs fired and will send companies into bankruptcy. So be sure that when you think about that, you are making those moments the exception and not the rule. So now use this information, go back and think about your own experiences inside organizations and participate in this week's discussion board as it has been described.